Hey, you're back here with Barry, and uh, happy Cinco de Mayo, hey, eh? happy 5th of May. Um, before we get started here, as I do always when it's pertaining to the virus series, and it's going to until we get back to work, uh, here we are, May 5th, so in the U.S., you're suffering from day 53 of stupidity, and in the DR, we're pretty close, we're giving you some competition, but... We're running in day 47 of our own lockdown stupidity, okay? But with that in mind, uh, it's kind of cool. Uh, anyway, it's so different here. I, I mean, we are so glad we're we're uh, we're out in the country a little bit. Um, again, even making plans moving further out uh, in the country, not not necessarily our bodies, but for what seems to be coming around the corner. Anyway, uh, everything's supposed to be closed, you know? How do you like my new do? Like, anything you want, from hardware to car parts to anything, when you know the owners, yeah, yeah, Bear will meet you there, yeah, yeah, what are the numbers, or yeah, yeah, sure, I'll open the shop, give you a clip, and it's so different, and God, am I glad we're here. Um, listen, uh, this comes out, it, it's kind of interesting because uh, from uh, a subscriber named Vladimir uh, from Australia. Now, I've, I, in my, my younger years, I spent an awful lot of time in Australia because it was a great landing point, And I did quite a few assignments, actually, in uh, Flinders Reef and the Coral Sea and the Barrier Reef, uh, Perth. Australia, all around there. I did a lot of assignments when I was an underwater photographer. Anyway, I know from, you know, boots on the ground about it that um, there is in pockets some very good size Russian neighborhoods. So Vladimir from Australia isn't as surprising to me. It's actually quite common. But uh, just on a sidebar, those are great people. My God, can those people have fun. Whee! I remember some of those evenings you'd get home the next day. Wow. It was anyway, back to reality of where we are now. Um listen, um anyway, this was sent, so a big thanks goes out to Vladimir. Okay, so everybody I'll, I'll sit on the sidelines. I might cut it a bit short, might not. It's a tremendous piece. I guess there's no better way to start it than exactly how they're doing it, and that is look, people, I'm in despair. Thanks, Vladimir. No. no. People, I'm in despair. This coronavirus overreaction has come at such a shocking price. Today's Bureau of Statistics figures, what have our politicians done? These stats tell us that their coronavirus bans have so far cost the jobs of more than three quarters of a million of our fellow Australians. That's three quarters of a million people have not just lost their jobs and probably their savings, they're also being told now, stay in your homes. Don't leave except for exercise, a doctor or basic shopping, if they can afford it. And the rest of us, of course, are also forced to obey very tough stay-home laws. Don't even dare go lie on Bondi Beach. Bondi is outside of Australia, on, uh, of Sydney, rather, the, the city of Sydney. And the folly of it all is that this is for a virus that in the past day to 6 a.m. this morning infected just 13 people. One in every two million of us. Does this not strike you as totally out of proportion? Today I read a story. Our stockpile of ventilators for coronavirus victims is now 3,000 with thousands more coming. Which is wonderful news. I mean, we were told we are going to run out, people would be dying, needing something, no equipment, except hang on. We've actually now got just, what, 50 or so coronavirus patients in intensive care units where they might need ventilators, 50. Most of these new ventilators are just filling up storerooms, unused. Politicians are now fighting a health crisis that is nothing as big as they imagine. And even some very senior doctors in our wondering crisis. Dr. Warwick Butt is the Director of Intensive Care at Melbourne's Royal Children's Hospital. And he says, yes, of course they had to prepare for this virus. I mean, we didn't know what was coming, did we? But now looking around, he's told the Herald Sun, a number of patients in the beds, the number now, normal. And said, hang on. He points out that the United States last year there were 
38 million cases of the normal flu and around 80,000 deaths there. Did you hear anything about it? In fact, last year, 900 Australians died of the flu. 900. With no media fuss, no stay-home laws, nothing. This coronavirus hasn't killed 900 Australians. It's killed just 72. A person in the 90s died today. Yet look at the utter devastation that our politicians have caused by their overreaction. I mean, going back to Warwick Butt, that ICU boss. Yes, this is coronavirus is deadly and yes there is no vaccine and we need to be careful but he says what we are seeing here is the media and internet spreading information and anxiety and concern escalates but actually when you look at the mortality rate it's probably not worse than the flu i mean it hits you harder than the flu that's true but the mortality rate will probably turn out to be less than the flu or about the same but our politicians will not say that truth. Now, you know, sure, we have actually kept deaths from the coronavirus down to much less than the flu due to some of the bans. But other bans are now so extreme that this cure is turning out to be worse than the disease. But again, politicians are too scared to tell you that truth. When you see the abuse and the Twitter rage and an economist who did say that last night on the ABC, you can understand why politicians are cowards. People in nursing homes who can be quarantined, yes, we should protect them. That, that doesn't mean that, you know, we shouldn't be thinking as well about other human welfare costs. Even with a very, very extreme epidemic in Australia, we are still potentially better off not having an economic lockdown in the first place because of the incredible effects that you see, not just in a short run way, but in many, many years to come. How can you say that? How can you say that? Like we're avoiding what's happened in the UK, what's happening in the US, the idea of having our ICUs overrun, our healthcare workers dying as well, is just the most horrible thought. It's like horrible. It's horrible either way. And on one side of the equation, yes, to repeat, 780,000 Australians lost their jobs in just three weeks. Hundreds of billions of dollars are now being spent on this lockdown that we will not have later for schools and pensions and hospitals. And our politicians don't, just don't seem to have the courage to face up to the fact that this coronavirus crisis was exaggerated, that there was no way that 150,000 of us would die like Victoria's chief health officer was warning the other day. But that morning, that modelling, that panicked our politicians and excited the media. Now our leaders are too scared to relax the bans that are hurting us more than helping. Sure, the National Cabinet of Federal and State Leaders did today finally agree to end some of the bans on elective surgery. Bans imposed to free hospital beds for floods of coronavirus victims that never came, but only a quarter of these bans will be lifted. Today we agreed to lift restrictions on elective surgery after Anzac Day after the long weekend. We will be easing the restrictions on the following areas, and that is all Category 2 or equivalent procedures in the private sector, um, and selected Category 3 and other procedures, which includes all IVF, uh, post-cancer reconstruction procedures such as breast reconstruction, uh, dental and level two restrictions so such as fitting dentures, braces, non-high-speed drilling and basic fillings, uh, all procedures for children under the age of 18, uh, all joint replacements including knees, hips and shoulders, all cataracts and eye procedures, uh, all endoscopy and colonoscopy. Now that's, that's great, yeah, but I thought it could have been easily done last week and the Prime Minister still keeps refusing to give up on any of the stay-home rules. Still refuses to accept that with just 13 new infections in the past day, that it is ludicrous to talk of a month more of all these bans at least. We are in the, still in the, very much in the middle of combating this terrible virus. It means we need to stick to our plan. No, 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 no. That plan was based on a false premise, on false modelling. We can all see that now. But no one will admit it. No one who counts. Meanwhile, Australians pay the price of this stubbornness. Like the 
780,000 Australians have just lost their jobs or the students who can't go to school or the families going crazy, locked up in their homes for weeks. What has happened to us, to our reason? It's absolutely incredible. I um, Listen, just to recap some of the points here, uh, it's really funny, but now we find it's actually the ventilators that are help killing some of the patients, the closed ventilators. Go and figure. Like, you know, it's 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 almost, it's sad to even have to talk about this. Um, you're told, stay at home. The people who don't do research, stay at home. See, none of this would happen if people would only do research. Because 95, 98% of them, if they did research, would clearly see this whole thing is staged. It's not a matter of trying. It, should, it shouldn't be a matter. What it's become, it shouldn't be. And that is to try to convince you of the truth. You see, ideally, if, if things were, and people lived up to their own responsibilities, they would actually do some in-depth research, and then 95 to 97 percent of the population now, you know, the, the percentage in masks would be the percentage that is not in masks, and it would be about 3 percent in masks. But what is it about us? We won't do our research. We've become so lazy. And I don't even know, honestly, if lazy is the right word. Maybe so conditioned, because a lot of people work hard hours, long hours. It's not They're not lazy people. Most aren't. Most have given up. That's the problem. So they've been browbeaten to death. But that, to me, I've never thought they were lazy. Look at, look at the people on the sidelines right now, people that have taken years to build businesses, Good people that are plan that at, at one time were planning to put children through colleges. Now college is basically a indoctrination process. Uh, I mean, th these are not lazy people. But when somebody is expecting truth to come to you, I, I don't know where we we took that wrong turn, but. Whew, are we paying dearly for it? And we still refuse to see. We're, you know, people were told, close your businesses. You hardworking people willingly closed your businesses. Why can't you understand the natural universal law of anything that comes from here first without going here? is dangerous. Even kindness, okay? We've all heard the expression, you're killing them with kindness. I've never found a more fitting time to use that expression. Look at the arguments being made in that over in, and that's in Australia. It's the same arguments. Well, yeah, if, if some people die helping to defend it, okay, it's sad. I agree. Like the, like, like the professional, like the doctor on the front lines is saying, she's getting killed for no reason at all. So if there was, again, there's a little over a hundred people in Australia that have died from this disease. And they've closed Australia down for two months, too. People, if this makes the least bit of sense to you, you are a sick individual. Get out of what you're addicted to. Get off the dope. And the dope is fear. A hundred people in the continent of Australia, and it's closed. To recap on some others, last year the common influenza in USA killed over 80,000. What lockdown took place? We're going to be bringing forward to you in the near future. I've, there's so much coming in. I'm trying to flood the gates. And again, thank you for bringing it more. But some of our own research, we've got videos coming in. Uh, from other subscribers on um, actually the owners of funeral parlors, okay, coming forth, openly showing how they're 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 forging the death certificates because of the amount of government 
programs providing uh, these these hospitals from COVID-19 death. If that's the cause, if they put them on a ventilator, it's another $8,000 more. And uh, this is why they're switching people right away to close ventilators. Listen to the nurses. I mean, I'm not going to waste my time and put on a hundred different nurses. If two or three, if two or three or four doctors, Nobel Prize winners in science, if that's not enough to get you to ask questions, screw you. Then you deserve what you get. 80,000 last year and no one, no one closed, no one locked a door. You know, right now, speaking of locked doors and keyholes, right now, to, most of what is out there is about as useful as a glass eye looking through a keyhole. They don't see shit because they're scared and they're giving and they've already done it. They've given away their futures and their children's and their grandchildren's futures. And they'll still defend. They'll still defend without doing research. They'll say, no, nah, every political person of any caliber already knows about it. Look at the senators. I forget if it was senators, mayors. I mean, where their families are vacating to their $4 million dig outs in Florida to get away. They're doing that while they're telling you nothing's wrong. My God, are some people, it's so true. It, and I won't argue, this is why I do the videos, because I don't want to be interrupted by the ignorant. Because when two people argue, and one has studied, and one is ignorant, completely ignorant to the fact, anybody that's watching you from 20 feet away, looking at you both, can't tell who the fool is, because you both look like fools to them. I'm not about to argue with anybody who's done no research. Let them pay the consequences. I'm just thoroughly disgusted at what we have become and how a handful of people are willfully controlling billions, billions, a handful. This is what understanding what the four primordial fears will do to the subconscious and how you come into the world with them and the difference with those who think they understand because they listen to what's brought to them. You see, one is not living under lock and key. The other one is. One will program to the other one you should be under lock and key. The receptive one who does no research will, yes, it's for my own good. Keep it up. It's very, very frustrating. Um, it's, ab it's absolute political suicide for anybody to speak up about it. That doesn't mean not every single one of them don't know about it. I've always told you, nobody asks the right questions. And when it comes to politicians, the only right question to ask is, where do these people come from? And I never have anybody ask me that. Where does, and I'm not saying good, bad, I'm not picking on them, just as an example. Where does a person like Obama come from? Never own a 7-Eleven. Never so much as that much business sense. Gets put through Ivy League universities with no money. Has, I believe it was, it's not important, but I believe it was a seven-bedroom home in a prominent neighborhood waiting for him upon graduation. And a few years after that, suddenly becomes the president of one of the most, if not the most powerful nation in the world. And no one ever asked the correct question, where did he come from? So, you see, it's just an example, okay? So don't, don't uh, put on, you know, whatever and get exaggerated about it. You can say the same with anyone who's an elected official. Do, do the bloodlines, do this, do that. You will find some incredible information if you're willing to actually do the groundwork. It's amazing. Anyway, um, listen, all the mentors and myself, and because and I guess I said out of the, the other three don't want to be too much on the camera. They don't care to be doing that. Uh, but all of us, the only question we ever asked is, does the threat warrant the response? 
and beyond a shadow of a doubt, it doesn't. And nobody's even, no one's even supporting it, even on mainstream uh, media right now, saying that it is exactly. They're saying what we said eight months, uh, two months ago. Excuse me, eight weeks ago. They're all saying, yeah, it was based on bad information. Yeah, it's nowhere near as deadly. Yeah, 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 yeah. But look at the masks out there. So I end with the same thing. Be prepared. Watch the ones who are still wearing the masks. They're not bad people. They're not stupid people. They are people trapped in fear, and that's a very powerful motivator. And they've got other people pushing their buttons. So you best start watching that, okay? Uh, thank you again for everything you're doing. If you think it's warranted, please pass this on to other people. Our only defense, and it is the only defense that really counts, if, if you look at it from our side of how the mentors see things, is we have the volume. But what we need to do is start understanding how to work together with it. And this can all go away in a few months. Uh, but that's what we're trying to do. Okay, so help us get it across. We really appreciate the growth and volume. Look forward to seeing all the folks coming out to see me once we're even allowed to fly. This is so ridiculous to a guy like me. Anyway, it's Olberian DR. Okay, thanks for everything. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm.